Have so you're the only one that doesn't actually have the pirate hairdo naturally, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. I got the case. Cut his mullet off. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. So, do you guys, what have you learned from the culture in, in doing and making this? I'm kind of getting my psychological and the sociological profile here from all of you in terms of what you've assimilated. Oh, I mean, sure. uh, I think what I, I mean, I think when I when I started out on this, I, I knew very little when you when we first cast about pirates, basically, other other than uh, other than you know what what you might see from you know Pirates of the Caribbean or the kind of R thing. Uh, what, uh, the biggest thing that I learned was that these guys and that these people were you know essentially the, you know, the, the beginning of the of, of democracy in the, in the free world in the, in the, in the, in the new world, so speak. And, and that was kind of the biggest. I, I, that, you know, shift now. Like, oh my God, this this is just 60 years before the revolution, and this is where that idea started taking hold. And I had never, I had never uh, come across that in uh, you know American history or any of that. And that was what kind of blew my mind that that was the first place that that was being done. And, uh, and for yourself? Yeah. yeah, in a similar way that there's, there was a tension. There's a great tension in this new society where there's kind of rules being shattered and a bit more quality of the sexes and a kind of a burgeoning democracy and maybe not so many more not so many politicians but at the same time you've got to have rules and otherwise it's just chaos and there's a real great plot tension between that i think a really neat little example of it is that all these great criminals and cowboys and rock stars walking around on this island yet they're all still dressed in frock coats and corsets, and it's the tropical heat. Like the social mores of the time, even for badasses, was like, oh, you should probably still have your hat and your boots on when you go. And a leather jacket. Yeah, and, le yeah. and leather pants. Yeah, mind, mind you, veins. And, and a leather belt. Quite a bit, you know? But uh, I think mean, that's a really interesting idea. They could do anything they wanted, and yet they still thought it necessary to dress like this in the tropics. And I think that's, I mean, th that's what, you know, the, I think that John and Robert and them do so well in writing the shows. That it, it shows that, yes, these people kind of all share this common, uh, you know, distrust for the, the current system, and they're disenfranchised by it. But they're they're really divergent in, in ha what they think needs to, to happen from there. So it's kind of, they just have this one thing in common, like, we don't like them. Now let's figure it out. But it's, it's really about characters with uh, basically like divergent intentions, um, and, and that's like I think that's cool, and that's where we get a lot of the drama from the show. It's like your character so arguably goes through one of the biggest evolutions in season one, from being sort of at the top of the food chain to the bottom, and then has to sort of fight his way back up again. So where do we sort of see him as we go into season two in terms of what he's all about now? Well, I think uh, you know going into season two. I mean, We've, we've still never really seen uh, in season one the whole of it. We didn't really see Vane being a pirate. We saw Vane doing what you do when you're not out hunting. Uh, and so I think that's something to kind of look forward to with him, regardless of, uh, of it. But, um, you know, when, in season one and season two it starts, he's, he's up at the fort. And, uh, you know, he's not, a, he's, not a very, he's, very, he's not a very stagnant person. So a lot, a lot continues to go on. And uh, I've been obviously very fortunate that they've given me such uh, I mean I think the best way the best thing for a character uh, in, in anything is basically you get kicked in the nuts you know like, like, literally I mean, you know you, you only, and, 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 and yeah and you only like you know people who get kicked in the nuts or, and get knocked down and get back up uh, and I, I you know I was saying that I think that might be the uh, in my life personally probably my, my best skill is that I can always get back up in general um, and, and, and I think that's like Charles Vane's kind of thing too. It gives you something to come back yeah. from in an arc, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. The interesting thing as well is that the, like, these pirate captains, when they were on land, their kind of job was over, they were on R&R. &R. So in season one we see a captain kind of going, well, I can't wait to be back at sea, and then he loses his ship and like, it's, you know, he's not, he's not happy being landlocked. Even that lovely image of of Bane, I think, to, right at the end of the first season, when he's up in the fort but staring out at sea, and you know he's not going to be happy. So he's yeah. a pirate captain again on a ship. Yeah, because what what good is? I mean, that, that's one of the things we, we we joke about all the time. It's like, what good is being called a pirate captain? If you're not a pirate ship, right? Because <laughs> I mean, these things aren't. It's not. It's not like a title. Even though you you know if you're once a captain, you're always you know, captain or something. Um, it's you know I always say you know like you know Bane hasn't been a captain. I haven't seen him on a captain ship yet. So. So it's really, you know, it's interesting. And nice. So what can you talk about the evolution of your characters and your the evolution of you and your characters and relate both of you in relation to the community of the set? You know, like what somebody was saying here about the different ships 
keeping separate as opposed to together? Or well, how'd you guys? You in, know? in the in the in the reality of the show, you know, uh, in season one, we we all worked you know a lot together, and and then when the, you know when the Walrus crew would be working together, so they'd be, they'd be shooting us or they'd be shooting them, so we'd all have off at the same time, and we'd all be on at the same time. So in that way, you end up spending a lot of time both on and off set together so. with the actual Ranger crew. Yeah. And the Ranger crew has had a lot of fun in Cape Town, South Africa. <laughs> Uh, just like they've had a lot of fun in, in NASA. Yeah. Tell us those stories. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the real yeah, stuff. Where did you... it's, it's actually that thing where like art imitates re you know uh, reality in a lot of times where you know you're down there because you want to be making the show. So the same frustration that Vane is feeling when he wants to go out there is the frustration you're feeling like itching to get at it. Um, and uh, so in that way, I think. It, it kind of maybe help things out. Yeah. Zach and I have a new appreciation for rum. Yes. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. We have tried rum everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the connoisseurs now. Yeah. 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 Literally. We, we, there, there is not a rum I think that we haven't tried. So is there a we, side book on the rum of uh, Black yeah. Sails? Well, yeah. yeah. a very rum classy coffee tried. table book. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's even talk of uh, some rum company opening and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you about that later. Yeah. Yeah. Can we, product? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we know. Uh, we know. Juice. We know a little bit from history that Jack sailed with female pirates like yep. Anne Bonny. Do you think we're going to get to see more female pirates? There's not much written. So. I think that what you, what you gleaned from the first season is that he's, he's Achilles' heel. Is, is, the, is the female, like he's on a field, oh, yeah. you know, on pirate ship, <laughs> but when it comes to women, he's, uh, he's thwarted, you know, he can't quite get his head around them, and I think it's very obvious that he has a, a complete, a mental uh, uh, attachment to Anne, and that's that's not going anywhere, you know, that, that can only expand. You know. yeah. What's been your, the scariest moment of your life, like, staring at some great people? About a creepy moment in my life. Real life. Besides sitting here with us, right? Uh, yeah. Well, go on, you've got some. Yeah. What are you talking about? I've never been scared of my life. Yeah, yeah. No, I live in constant fear. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Wait, can I get a picture of the two of us?